Hello, my name is Kelsey and welcome to Becoming Home. Today I want to show you how a little watercolor paint, some watercolor pencils, and a simple design can go a long way into making a thoughtful, meaningful card. I am not an artist by any means and you don't have to be to pull this off. Let's get started. What I have here is a simple watercolor palette that I got when I was a child. Something inexpensive you can pick up at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I also have a set of watercolor pencils. The paper I'm using is fairly thick sketch paper, but it's not designed specifically for watercolor. To protect the inside of your card, place a piece of paper between the fold. Now go for it. Let the creative juices flow. Pick two or three colors and swipe a light abstract wash of color onto your card. This will be your background. Let it dry. Next, begin to pencil in your design. I'm drawing a bass fish, and like I said, I'm not an artist, so I actually followed a wiki tutorial. The key is to break down your fish, or whatever you're drawing, into simple shapes. Here, there's a large oval, connected to a smaller oval, connected to a rounded triangle, which is his tail. Then, you draw a sort of half circle for his mouth and add the details like gills and fins. Don't set anything in stone. Let your pencil move freely, and you'll begin to feel where his shape is supposed to be and see what looks good. Continue to follow your tutorial or refer to a picture. Check it often to make sure you're getting the general proportions right, but don't be too hard on yourself. What I'm doing here is attempting to pick up some color because I want the mouth and belly of my fish to be lighter. This would work a whole lot better if I had proper watercolor paper, but the general concept is to use a clean wet paintbrush, lightly swipe over the color you want to lift off, and then dab with a clean cloth or paper towel. Next, I'm putting down my basic colors. Dark green for his back and tail fin, throwing some blue outlines on his gills and fins for contrast, washing a light pink for his open mouth. Make sure not to paint any areas that you want to stay light. Watercolor is all about building up these layers of color and letting them dry in between. I really want that top ridge of his back to be a dark green, so I'm going back and laying down another layer of paint. Then I'm using gravity to force the paint to be thickest and richest right at the edge of his back. I'll come back later with a clean brush and blend that line down into his body. Remember what I said about layers. Don't overwork any one section. As you wait for one section to dry, you can work on another section. As per the name, watercolors use a lot of water, and the danger is over wetting the paper and rubbing right through it as a result. Plus, if you don't let the layers dry, you won't begin to build up the richness of color you want. Unlike acrylics, you can't just throw down a thick coat of paint and expect it to work. Watercolor demands a little bit more patience. Once you're happy with the basic colors and the amount of paint you have on your fish, it's time to use those watercolor pencils. This is what brings the picture together and makes it look polished and finished. The ability to sharpen the pencil and therefore produce fine thin lines makes the detail work so much easier. Now you can really see the definition on the gills and fins. You can add the spotted pattern that some fish have on their backs. You can highlight lines and edges that you want to stand out. And the best part is, because you're using watercolor pencils, if you make a mistake or don't like how something looks, you can take a clean wet paintbrush and blend down that harsh line. Another thing I like about the pencils is that they add a bit of texture. Now the fish doesn't seem so flat and one dimensional. This of course is also due to the fact that we've built up our layers and we have our contrast between dark and light. Another disclaimer, I'm not a for real artist, I haven't studied art and I don't know all the proper terms and techniques. But that's just my point. Just an average guy or girl can pick up a paintbrush and make something unique and meaningful. I made this card for my boss's birthday because he loves to fish and he's a competitive angler. I couldn't have found something so specific and unique at the average grocery store. And bonus, it costs less than a store-bought card anyway. I had the freedom to tailor it to exactly what I wanted and the time and effort it took made it extra meaningful. I hope I've inspired you to pick up a brush and make your own meaningful and unique cards. I promise you, your friends and family will enjoy and appreciate them. It doesn't take a lot of talent, just a little creativity and time. And if you're worried, just start with a simple design or follow a wiki tutorial to help you break down the shapes and get those proportions right. If you enjoyed this video, be sure and subscribe. Also, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Watch me tackle my first table makeover here or learn how to make the most delicious potato casserole by clicking here. Thanks to everybody out there watching my videos and I'll see you next Friday.